the ventral rami instead of directly innervating target structures contribute to form five different major plexuses cervical plexus brachial plexus lumbar plexus sacral plexus and coccygeal plexus these plexuses are interconnected with some overlap c5 contributes to both cervical and brachial plexuses t12 contributes to lumbar plexuses L4 contributes to both lumbar and sacral plexuses. S4 contributes to both sacral and coccygeal plexuses. Whereas T1 and T12 are an exception. They do not form plexuses. Instead, they continue as individual intercostal nerves supplying the thoracic wall directly. Thus, intercostal nerves are nothing but the anterior rami of thoracic spinal nerve. Let's understand sacral plexus in more details. Sacral plexus is formed by the ventral rami of L4 to S4. Its branches arise from the both anterior and posterior divisions. Some now come from the anterior, others from the posterior, and two nerves come from the both divisions. That includes the sciatic nerve with the root value of L4 to S3, is formed by the tibial nerve from the anterior division, and the common peroneal nerve from the posterior division. Always remember, in the sacral plexus, branches from the anterior division always include the last contributing root. So, in case of sciatic nerve with the root value of L4 to S3, the last root that is S3 is always included in the tibial nerve but excluded from this common peroneal nerve which has a root value of L4 to S2. The second major branch is the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh with the root value of S1 to S3. Its anterior division components include S2, S3 and its posterior division components include S1 and S2. Now let's look at the anterior division branches. The mnemonic is QOP standing for three nerves starting with these letters. Now to caudatus femoris, now to obturator internus and pudental nerve. Use the formula 3 as to 3 to remember that all branches crown come from the three roots. Now to cotitis femoris from the first three roots. Now to obturator internus arises from the next three roots with some overlap. Pudental now as a rule since it arises from the anterior division it must include S4. So without any overlap it arises from S2, S3 and S4. Coming to the branches coming out from the posterior division. So use the mnemonic G2P2 which stands for superior gluteal nerve, inferior gluteal nerve, nerve to pyriformis and perforating cutaneous nerve. The formula here is 3 as to 2 means first two branches arise from the three roots with overlap, next two arise from the two roots with overlap and as I mentioned earlier S4 is always excluded from the posterior division branches. The sacral plexus forms within the pelvic cavity and exit posteriorly through the greater sciatic foramen. Here, most of its branches supply the gluteal region. After innervating pelvic and gluteal muscle, the major branch, the sciatic nerve, travels from the pelvic cavity to the posterior thigh. Notably, both the components, tibial nerve and common peroneal nerve, appear distinct and separate right from their origin within the plexus.